chapter four, which is the uh, proof of the Lotus Sutra. Now, this Gosho is on page 1108 of volume one. Okay? Mm -hmm. And normally, what we do when we study Goshos is we read the whole Gosho, including the background. We start with the background first. This is a relatively short Gosho, it's really only a page and a half. So, most of what is read at the beginning here is the whole Gosho, but not all of it. So I'm going to read the whole Go Show. You mm. can follow along with me out of your book for all but like about three sentences. Mm. Mm. It's going to only skip from like about here to about here. That it's not in the book. But if you want to go to page 1108. There you go. <coughs> okay. So, everybody ready? Mm -hmm. yes. All right. I'm going to start reading the Go Show then. The Proof of the Lotus Sutra by Nichiren, the votary of the Lotus Sutra. And President Kato will make mention of the significance of this. It's on page 1108, volume 1. How does the mirror... First of all, let me read the background. This letter was written at Minobu to Nanjo Shichiro Jiro, commonly known as Nanjo Tokimitsu, in the second month, 1282, when Nichiren Daishonin himself was seriously ill. When he was in his teens, Tokimitsu had assumed his deceased father's duties as steward of the Ueno district, which covered a vast area on one side of Mount Fuji. Particularly during the Atsuhara persecution, Tokimitsu had made many sacrifices in order to defend the Daishonin's followers who lived in his domains. For his courage, the Daishonin had honored him by uh, naming him Ueno the Worthy in a letter written on the sixth day of the 11th month, 1279, and entitled The Dragon Gate. On first hearing of to Tokimitsu's grave illness, the Daishonin had apparently asked a disciple to write a letter of encouragement on his behalf, since he himself was too ill to write. Deeply concerned, however, about the youthful believer, he forced himself to take up his writing brush and sent this letter through Niko Shonin to help Tokimitsu overcome his illness. The Daishonin declares that Tokimitsu is a person who, according to the Lotus Sutra, has made offerings to a hundred thousand million Buddhas in his past existences. He then strictly warns the demons causing Tokimitsu's illness that if they do not cure him, they will suffer in the great Avicii hell. The letter is traditionally called the proof of the Lotus Sutra because it points out that the, all the Buddhas gave credence to the truth of the Lotus Sutra. However, it is also known as prayer for a return to life from fatal illness because Tokimitsu was then battling a serious illness. Okay, we ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Do understand that uh, Nanjo Tokimitsu was one of the Daishonin's favorite disciples because he had uh, embraced faith at such an early age mm -hmm. on his own in honor of his father and sustained it through the, to the last moment of his life. I mean, don't forget, Tokimitsu is the one that took his mom's ashes took him all the way up to Minobu. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Okay, so how does the mirror of the Lotus Sutra portray the people who in the evil age of the latter, in the evil world of the latter age believe in the teachings of the Lotus Sutra? Now this is again, this is right here starting on page uh, 53. You can read right along with me mm -hmm. except for about three paragraphs, three sentences out of the Skosha. I'll start again. How does the mirror of the Lotus Sutra portray the people who in the evil world of the latter age believe in the teachings of the Lotus Sutra just as they are set forth in the Sutra? Shakyamuni Buddha has left us words from his golden mouth revealing that such people have already made offerings to a hundred thousand million uh, Buddhas in their past existences. But ordinary people in the latter age might well doubt the words spoken by, that, uh, by just one Buddha. With this in mind, many treasures Buddha came expressly all the way from the world of treasure purity, many lands to the east. Facing Shakyamuni Buddha, he gave his words of testimony about this Lotus Sutra, saying, all that, you have, all that you have expounded is true. If this is so, then there can be no room for doubt about the matter. Nevertheless, Shakyamuni Buddha may have felt that ordinary people in the latter age would still be skeptical. Um, hence he summoned the Buddhas of the Ten Directions to come and join him in the magnificent act of extending their long, broad tongues, which had uh, told nothing but the truth for countless kalpas until they projected it 
uh, into high into the sky, as high into the sky as Mount Simru. Since this is the case, when ordinary people in the latter age believe in even one or two words of the Lotus Sutra, they are embracing the teaching to which the Buddhas of the Ten Directions have given credence. I wonder what karma we created in the past to have been born as such persons, and I am filled with joy. The words of Shakyamuni that I refer to above indicate that the blessings that come from having made offerings to 100,000 million Buddhas are so great that even if one has believed in teachings other than the Lotus Sutra and as a result of this slander been, uh, poor, uh, been born poor and lowly, one is still able to believe in this sutra in this lifetime. A Ten Tai School's commentary states, it is like the case of a person who falls to the ground but who then pushes himself up from the ground and rises up to his feet again. One who has fallen to the ground recovers and rises up from the ground. Those who slander the Lotus Sutra will fall to the ground of the three evil paths or of the human and heavenly realms. But in the end, through the help of the Lotus Sutra, they will attain Buddhahood. Now, since you, Ueno, Shichiro, Jiro, are an ordinary person in the latter age and were born to a warrior family, you should, be by right, you should by rights be called an evil man, and yet your heart is that of a good man. I say this for a reason. Everyone from the ruler on down to the common people refuses to take faith in my teachings. They inflict harm on the few who do embrace them, uh, heavily taxing or confiscating their estates and thieves, fields, or even in some cases putting them to death. So it is a difficult thing to believe in my teachings, and yet both your mother and your deceased father dared to accept them. Now you have succeeded your father as his heir, and without any prompting from others, you too have wholeheartedly embraced these teachings. Many people, both high and low, have admonished or threatened you, but you have refused to give up your faith. Since you now appear certain to attain Buddhahood, perhaps the heavenly devil and evil spirits are using illness to try to intimidate you. Life in this world is limited. Never be even the least bit afraid. And you demons, by making this man suffering, are you trying to swallow a sword point first or embrace a raging fire or become an arch enemy of the Buddhas of the Ten Directions and the Three Existences? How terrible this will be for you. Should you not cure this man's illness immediately, act rather as his protectors and escape from the grievous sufferings that are the lot of, that are the lot of demons? If you fail to do so, will you not have your heads broken into seven pieces in this life and fall into the great hell of incessant suffering in your next? Consider it deeply, consider it. If you ignore my words, you will certainly regret it later. Everybody's with me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So going to uh, the lecture, that was the full go show with the background. Going to the lecture, we're going to skip starting on page... 53, where all this gray area is nothing more than the ghost show that I just read, okay? Mm -hmm. With a few sentences skipped. Um, and do you guys remember last week when I mentioned, you know, anybody that's upheld even one or two words that says in the Lotus Sutra has served a, a zillion, yep. million, billion, that's what I was trying to yep. say, okay? Mm. And so what's a, a hundred, a thousand, what's a hundred thousand million? Can you do math that fast? It's 10 billion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So we've all served 10 billion Buddhas prior to this existence. Make no mistake about that. He's saying that not, with, not, not as though that's kind of a joke. He's saying that with absolute certainty. If you don't take that seriously, you have no faith. I'll be honest with you. He's saying take it literally. I suggest you try and do that. Don't look at it as a figurative kind of a term. Good health, lecture on page 55. Good health is the wish of all people. Of course, all, all living beings are Buddhas, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good health is the wish of all people. Long life is the desire of all humankind. From the time I became Soka Gakkai president on May 3rd, 1960, I have earnestly prayed each day for the health, longevity, safety, and well-being of my fellow members. Now, I've been practicing for almost 45 years, and I almost cannot remember a single thing that he's ever written where he doesn't talk about he's praying for the health and the well-being of all the members of the Soka Gakkai. So that really is something that he has legitimately done. I believe he's done it heart fast, heartfeltly, and I don't believe it's boilerplate. I believe he actually does make that prayer to the Gohonzon, protect everyone that's trying to achieve Kosen Rufu. That's what a Buddha does. So 
Whereas years ago, I'd go like, yeah, right. Now I really do believe seriously, yes, you know, that's one of the reasons why he's lived as long as he has and why we've been able to overcome all the things we've been able to overcome as an organization, as a teaching, as the correct teaching. Mm. So he says, I have earnestly prayed each day for the health, longevity, safety, and well-being of all my fellow members. I believe that to be a fact. For the last five decades... I have prayed fervently that all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, all heavenly deities, the positive forces throughout the universe, rigorously protect and safeguard my disciples without fail. My disciples without fail. Nam Myoho Rengeko is the great beneficial medicine for good health and a long life. It is the fundamental rhythm of the universe and the wellspring of the immense life force of Buddhas. My sincerest wish, therefore, is that all who possess this wonderful medicine of the mystic law will lead supremely rewarding and deeply satisfying lives of mission, living out their lives to the fullest. Faith in the mystic law drives us to live life to the fullest. Now, do you know people that chant Nam Myoho Rengekyo that don't live their lives to the fullest? Do you know anybody that just kind of goes along with it? Are they really living at, to, to be votaries of the Lotus Sutra and to be disciples of Daisaku Akeda? Mm -hmm. When he says, I have, I, I have uh, prayed fervently that all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, all heavenly deities, the positive, to rigorously protect and safeguard my disciples without fail. Who is he talking about? Is he talking about just anybody in the Soka Gakkai? No. no. Can we really call somebody that doesn't follow his teaching his disciple? No. no. So when he refers to his disciples, he's referring to something specific. That's why he doesn't say SGI members. Mm -hmm. Do understand that. Mm -hmm. He's making a distinction purposely. It's not, not by careless omission. Right. In this chapter, with my sincere prayers for the happiness and safety of all our members, why would he mention it twice then? Okay, one specifically because he knows there are votaries the Lotus Sutra that are being taught by his teachings mm. right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, that will take up the banner and teach as well. In this chapter, with my sincere prayers for the happiness and safety of all our members, I will discuss the writing, the proof of the Lotus Sutra. In this letter, Nichiren Daishonin pours his life into encouraging a beloved disciple battling a life-threatening illness. The letter is dated February 28, 1282. Uh, Nietzsche himself had been suffering from ill health since the previous year. News had reached him that Nanjo Tokumitsu had been fighting valiantly under the leadership of Nikko Shonen against religious persecution in Sugura Province, present-day central Shizuoka Prefecture, and had, fallen and had fallen seriously ill. Tokumitsu was only 24 at the time. Though three days before the, writing this letter, having already heard that he was sick, Nietzsche had dictated a note, because he was so ill and weak himself, had dictated a note conveying his prayers for Tokumitsu's speedy recovery, which Nichiro, a principal disciple, had transcribed and delivered. Okay? But it appears that his deep concern for his beloved young follower prompted Nietzsche to pick up his brush and write a letter of earnest encouragement. In this letter, he seeks to awaken in Tokimitsu the fighting spirit not to be defeated by the devil of illness, instructing him in the essence of faith of overcome, for overcoming illness. This illustrates the incredible care and compassion of this great teacher and that he did not begrudge his life at a point in time when he didn't feel really physically up to it but based on faith in the true teaching and the necessity of leaving disciples that understood the true teaching, he had to express through his own actions the correct action of a votary of the Lotus Sutra. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he wants to make sure that Tokimitsu understands this and that he will not be uh, defeated by the devil of illness and instructing him uh, in the essence of faith for overcoming illness but at the same time, he's fighting illness himself at that very moment. Mm -hmm. Extreme illness. So much illness that he couldn't even, didn't even feel like he could write a, a letter three days earlier. Okay? But somehow found the Ichinen inside because he knew it was a crucial moment. And Tokimitsu might not hold on unless he 
gathered himself, found his Buddha nature, had confidence in his faith of the teaching that could be de that could deliver him from the illness, and then overcome it. Much of much of this has to do with life condition, okay? And life condition is a part of of the phenomenal world that's recognized in psychology and wellness centers and all kinds of different holistic processes for leading a healthy physical life, okay? Your mental state does affect your physical state, okay? So it's not a matter of projecting positive thinking. It's a matter of projecting absolute faith. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. Do understand that. Do understand this. We're talking about absolute faith in this teaching, not positive thinking for the sake of trying to get our life condition up. Absolute faith in the teaching does get our life condition up, and the two correlate as such as it relates to a physiological remedy for, a, for any kind of malady or illness. You can fight through anything if you fight, or you can have it take longer to get over if you give in. Sure. You know, I saw with my father-in-law how even fighting for just a few extra weeks, days, months allowed him to attain Buddhahood in his present form. Without that struggle, he would not have done it. He would have died in Imbutsa Believer. Yes. Okay? He completely, in a moment of faith, can changed his entire karma. Why? Because he suffered. When I, you remember, I, I, hope he, I hope he dies peacefully. I'm going like, no, let him suffer his ass off. Let him get all that Imbutsa shit out he can. Okay? Mm. That's why we suffer. We suffer because of the causes we make. We shouldn't run from those effects. We should overcome those effects so that they're abolished from our karmic influence. Yes. This is the point. This is the wisdom of the Buddha. To not perceive illness as a bunch of germs, but to, believe, to understand there has to be a causal circumstance. There are germs involved in illness. Okay? But this is still a karmic circumstance related to relationship. Okay? Is everybody with me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... One rather unusual feature of this writing is that it begins with Nietzsche and sig a signature, Nietzsche and the votary of the Lotus Sutra. In all his extant writings, the proof of the Lotus Sutra, this Gosho is the only one that begins with this type of signature. All right? So a votary of the Lotus Sutra is someone who works to establish the supreme teaching for the enlightenment of all people in the evil age of the latter day of the law and selfless, selflessly propagates that teaching for the sake of worldwide Kosen Rufu into the, infant, into the eternal future. Beginning, end. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. yeah? So let's say it one more time. A votary of the Lotus Sutra is not just anyone that chants Nam Myoho Renge no. mm. but is someone who works to establish now, you could be in that phase, okay, that you're doing the best you can, and that's all you can do is chant Nam Myoho Renge. You don't understand this. You're on the path to, uh, 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 to, to validating yourself as a votary of the Lotus Sutra. But the, the actual point in time you become a votary of the Lotus Sutra is when you become a uh, Bodhisattva of the Earth, stage five. When you're of the same mind as Nietzsche, and that's when you're actually a votary of the Lotus Sutra, okay? Not when you think you're part of a social organization, that all gets together at community centers and reads two or three sentences and talks about a bunch of shit, okay? So a votary of the Lotus Sutra is someone who works to establish the supreme teaching. Works to establish the supreme teaching. So how do you work to establish the supreme teaching? I'm going to drive you crazy breaking sentences down, but he's saying a lot in each sentence, so I have to. Mm -hmm. Who works to establish the supreme teaching for the enlightenment of, of all people in the evil age of the latter day of the law. That means somebody that lives and practices according to the teaching of the Buddhism itself. Mm -hmm. You know, as somebody that is, again, functioning as a bodhisattva of the earth, someone of the same mind as Nichiren. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's what you do. You're practicing not for benefits. Benefits have come of their own accord from the fortune you create. You're worried widespread propagation, propagation is what you're all about. The proof of the Lotus Sutra is a letter in which Nietzsche offers strict yet compassionate guidance as a votary of the Lotus Sutra to a younger follower 
who will carry on the mission of propagating the mystic law. Do you understand? He teaches him how to be a votary by being a votary. He provides the living example of what to emulate for Nanjo Tokimitsu. He says he urges a Tokimitsu to battle and resolutely triumph over the devil of illness so that he may bring forth the victorious life state of Buddhahood for all to see. That's the point, isn't it? That's the point. It's not about personal longevity. Once again, it's being the Buddha. It's expressing the law with your life in whatever fashion that is. We all have different missions. We'll all have to do it different ways. But it's the faith that makes you have this kind of desire seated in this kind of sense of motivation and direction and commitment and faith that is ultimately what brings forth that kind of action. Do you understand? That's when you start to live the teaching. All right? Rather than read the teaching. We all read the teaching from day one. We read the teaching and read the teaching and read the teaching. Living the teaching is completely different from that. Mm -hmm. In addition, Nietzsche directly addresses the so-called demons or negative workings in life. He calls them out. Yeah. He sternly admonishes them for inflicting suffering on the disciple of a votary of the Lotus Sutra, warning that in doing so they risk making enemies of the Buddhas throughout the ten directions and the three existences. I say the same kind of stuff to the Gohonzon all the time. Why do I talk like that to the Gohonzon? I have an example of a votary of the Lotus Sutra that says, you can, you're the Buddha. Of course you can admonish every aspect of anything in the universe to reflect on the reality of who you are and what the causal relationship of how you're dealt with affects those who deal with you. That sounds arrogant, but it's not. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you, give the devil, you give everything that gives you shit, shit back. You don't, you don't just take it. You don't take it. You battle. You battle constantly. Yeah. You, that's what the Lotus Sutra. Hey, if I can uphold even one or two words, I've already served over 10 billion Buddhas in previous existences. Excuse me. Yeah, that's a fact. That's not me saying that. That's Nietzsche saying that because Shakyamuni said that in the Lotus Sutra. So excuse me. It's not my arrogance or Nietzsche's arrogance. This is the teaching. And the attitude that he's teaching you to have is the attitude that is taught in the teaching. Read how Shakyamuni talks. Does he talk all kind of funny? Yeah, I don't know if you, if you agree with No, he speaks in declaratives. All Buddhists speak in declaratives because they're speaking the truth. Except when they're having to utilize expedient means because they already perceive a limited capacity in the person they're communicating with. Do you understand? Yep. All right, so... Uh, at the end of the writing, that's where I'm at, right? Mm -hmm. Where am yeah. I? Yeah. Yeah, at the end of the writing, right? Second paragraph, second column, page 56. Yeah. Yeah. Light is eternal. Mm -hmm. As his word deeply and uh, powerfully. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. His words deeply and powerfully convey his towering spirit and conviction. Okay, that's what I was just talking about. I didn't read that sentence, but that's what I'm talking about. His words deeply and powerfully convey his towering spirit, his conky, his confidence, his faith. I am the Buddha. Yeah. My teaching is the correct teaching. Mm -hmm. Okay? The teaching of the Lotus Sutra is, prevails over all other teachings. Okay? And conviction as a votary, because again, he's doing those things that make a votary. A votary of the Lotus Sutra is someone who, right? Yeah who has triumphed over great obstacles. As a votary who has triumphed over great obstacles. Are there some votaries that don't triumph, have to triumph over great obstacles? No. no. Who has triumphed over great obstacles in his efforts to widely propagate the mystic law in the latter day. Bodhisattva of the earth. Okay? At the end of this writing, we find the words delivered by Hokibo. This indicates that the letter was first sent to Hokibo, otherwise known as Nikoshonin. We can well imagine Nietzsche's trusted disciple 
going to see the uh, ailing Tokimitsu with this heartfelt letter of encouragement and reading it to him at his bedside. <coughs> Most certainly, the ardent lion's roar of Nitrin contained therein penetrated Tokimitsu's life and made him deepen his resolve not to be defeated by the negative functions that were assailing him. In fact, he overcame his illness and lived for another 50 years. Okay? Because at the crucial moment, the mentor saw that it was the crucial moment and delivered the encouragement that was necessary for the crucial moment. And the disciple realized the mentor's wisdom that this is the crucial moment. And from that guidance and encouragement was able to derive the life state of Buddha and overcome the devil of illness, the devil of the death, right? Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So when, is the, when the disciple strives with the same spirit as the mentor, when we are of the same mind as Nietzsche, okay, mm -hmm. devoted to widespread propagation, not our own benefit, mm. there is no obstacle or devilish function that cannot be surmounted, and there is no illness that cannot be p positively transformed in accord with the principle of changing poison into medicine, okay? And you've seen different people attack illness with nam myoho rengekyo and probably seen different results. Mm. Some people, chen nam myoho rengekyo, and the result is victory. Mm. Others... And it's not quite victory, okay? They may sustain their life condition. They don't necessarily change the illness, okay? It's not about changing the illness as much as it is changing the circumstance from poison into medicine. In other words, making the illness a source of benefit, mm -hmm. a source of fortune. Mm -hmm. How could you do that? How could that be? Face. Like yeah, but faith in what? Mm -hmm. It's actually a little deeper than that. Yes, faith. Mm -hmm. But faith of what? That's completion. Faith that everything you encounter is for the sake of you to defeat. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Everything is for the purpose of you showing actual proof. Okay? Mm -hmm. So he's saying... Um, when, or, when the disciple strives with the same spirit as the mentor, there is no obstacle or devilish function that cannot be surmounted, and there is no illness that, can, illness that cannot, possibly, cannot be positively transformed in accord with the principle of changing poison into medicine. So again, that isn't necessarily, I've got cancer and now I don't. Do you understand? Right. Let me read this again so that you understand. All right? When the disciple strives with the same spirit as the mentor, there is no obstacle or devilish function that can, cannot be surmounted. So whenever the disciple acts as the votary, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. there isn't the, anything that cannot be surmounted. But understand what surmounting is. Mm -hmm. And there is no illness that cannot be possibly transformed in accord with the principle of changing poison mm -hmm. into medicine. We take that obstacle and we defeat it through our faith. It's not a matter of overcoming it as a form of illness. It's overcoming it as an impediment to our eternal Buddhahood. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes illness is finally the thing that gets people to get their shit together. Mm. You know, they don't, they, they read it and read it and read it and read it. But when they, they're told, you might, you're, you might be dying. Yeah. They get yeah. very, very resolute. That's what happened with my father-in-law, okay? Oh. When he knew he was, Nimbutsu is not getting me there. Mm -hmm. The men and I went to his hospital room with nam myoho Rengekyo. Tears came down his face, and he threw that shit out the window and started chanting nam myoho Rengekyo. And even though his mm -hmm. life was not extended years and years and years, mm -hmm. it was extended enough for that circumstance to take mm -hmm. place. Do you understand? Yeah. So this, this, this. This oak changing poison into medicine, you should always understand, is a process of showing um, negative influences having a flip side that is the exact same thing as the negative influence that's the enlightened side. That's changing poison into medicine. There's really no change. It's just the other side of the same uh -huh. thing. Poison and medicine are the same thing. Good and evil are the same thing. 
There's non-duality throughout Buddhism. So everybody understands? Yes. Yes. Okay. So he's not talking about Chet Nam Yoho Rengekyo, and they're in a goddamn thing that can get you sick and kill you. That isn't what he's saying. He's saying Chet Nam Yoho Rengekyo, and there isn't a goddamn thing that you can get sick at that you will not be able to defeat as it relates to changing poison into medicine and showing actual proof and attaining Buddhahood in your present form. Mm -hmm. The proof of the Lotus Sutra highlights the key to good health and long life and conveys the victory of mentor and disciple because when we win, so does the teacher. Possessing a profound connection with the Lotus Sutra, page 57, how do, from the Gosho, how does the mirror of the Lotus Sutra portray the people who in the, la, la, in the evil world of the latter age believe in the teachings of the Lotus Sutra just as they are set forth in the Sutra? So what's he saying there? What's he, how's he slip that in? What's he slip in there? What's the last go show we just read? What's the name of the last go show we just read? All you got to do is go back three pages. It's on the top of the book. On practicing the Buddha's teachings, right? What was the whole point of that whole go show? That only by practicing according to the Buddha's teachings can you attain Buddhahood in your present form, right? So what does this first paragraph say? The how does the mirror of the Lotus Sutra portray the people who in the evil world of the outer age believe in the teachings of the Lotus Sutra just as they are set forth in the sutra. Do you understand? Why does he put just as they are set forth in the sutra? That means without holding on to the expedient means of the provisional teachings. That means embracing only the Buddhism, the sowing, and nam myoho rengekyo. That means doing all those things that we just learned in three <laughs> chapters of this Gosho on practicing the Buddha's teachings. So you should already know what he's talking about there. Okay? Each one of these ghost shows is going to segue into the next one. So remember what the previous one was talking about. Okay. All right? Shakyamuni Buddha has left us words from his golden mouth revealing so that we'll all understand how significant it is for someone to be able to uphold even a word or two of the Lotus <coughs> Sutra in the evil age of the latter day. Okay? Shakyamuni went ahead and clarified that in the Lotus Sutra before he took off after the Nirvana Sutra, right? right? And he said, such people have already made offerings to 100,000 million, 10 billion Buddhas in their past existences, okay? When ordinary people in the latter age believe in even one or two words of the Lotus Sutra, they are embracing the teaching to which the Buddhas of the 10 directions have given credence in the Lotus Sutra as the source of all Buddha's Buddhahood, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, everybody's with me, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that's what it says in the Lotus Sutra, right? Mm -hmm. All right, I wonder what karma he's saying to Nanjo Tokimitsu. We as two common mortals, me up here in the middle of the woods, sick as hell, you down there taking care of your whole, you know, crew, sick as hell, but at the same time, I wonder what kind of karma we could have created in the past to have been born as such persons that have served 10 billion Buddhas in the past. Okay? And I am filled with joy because, damn, we must have been pretty hot shit, huh? <laughs> Not joke. Surely we can overcome something as simple as being sick. We've served 10 billion Buddhas. The words of Shakyamuni that I referred to above indicate that the blessings that come from having made offerings <coughs> to 100,000 million, 10 billion Buddhas, are so great that even if one has believed in teachings other than the Lotus Sutra, and as a result of this slander been born poor and lonely, one, still, one is still able to believe in this sutra in this lifetime. A Tentai School's commentary states, it is like the case of a person who falls to the ground but who then pushes himself up from the ground and rises to his feet again. One who has fallen to the ground recovers and <clears throat> rises up from the ground. 
Those who slander the Lotus Sutra will fall to the ground of the three evil paths or the human and heavenly realms. But in the end, through the help of the Lotus Sutra, they will attain Buddhahood. And, and what's, the, what's the true essence of that analogy there? That you stumble, right? And you fall. Yeah. Yeah. But how is it that you get back up? Not give up. Huh? Not give up. Not only give up. Thing. You use the very thing that stumbled you mm. yeah. as the means to up, make yourself upright. Mm. Right. Do you understand? Mm. That's the point. So, um, in, the in the first half of this writing, Nietzsche and Daishonin explains that those who believe in the Lotus Sutra and the latter day of the law have, been ex have an extremely profound karmic connection with Buddhism, reaching back to previous existences. Period, 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 period. There's nobody here at this table that heard about Nam Myoho Rengekyo for the first time in this lifetime. I promise you that. Because I know you're all votaries. I'm teaching you how to be votaries based on the teachings of President Nikita, based on the teachings of, of, of Nietzsche. Okay? So there is no doubt. You should not doubt, any of you, that you are already very powerful, very capable, very learned Buddhists. And I'll take it the next step of arrogance. Or you wouldn't know me. Okay? You wouldn't have me as your teacher. I'm, I'm being straight up with you now. All right? So, he, you have an extremely karmic, uh, profound karmic connection, reaching back to previous existences. First, he emphasizes that they are people who have made offerings to 100,000 million Buddhas. And we as Bodhisattvas of the earth have all done that in the process of propagating the law over the many lifetimes since the original state. Uh, 100,000 million Buddhas in the past. Not only does Shakyamuni Buddha tell us this, but then in case he worries that we're just worried he's just putting out a little more boilerplate, many treasures goes, comes. And that's the whole purpose of many treasures coming to the ceremony in the air, right? Yeah. Or actually, at the beginning of the ceremony there, is to... Uh, substantiate that what Shakyamuni is saying is the absolute truth mm -hmm. and the Buddhas of the Ten Directions unanimously attest to this truth that's when their broad tongues you know they're all sitting on lion's seats you know the scene it's pretty outrageous okay <laughs> um, many treasures and the Buddhas of the Ten Directions unanimously attest to the truth okay this prompts Nietzsche to observe, I wonder what karma we created in the past who have been born as such persons, and I am filled with joy. In the latter, a, in the latter day, an age steeped in suffering and confusion, it is through immense good fortune and an extraordinary karmic connection that we can uphold the Lotus Sutra. Okay? So sometimes we're going to go through things where we're going like, you know, oh, you just got to meet the obstacles and overcome the obstacles. God damn, this is so hard. When does this shit ever end? That is really the wrong attitude because what we're inspired and correctly taught to perceive our life at is that it is through immense good fortune and extremely and extraordinary karmic connections that we can uphold the Lotus Sutra. And it's because we uphold the Lotus Sutra that we encounter those difficulties, yeah. right? right? So yeah. we shouldn't lament them. That's why he says the wise will yeah. rejoice while the foolish retreat, right? right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he says the Daishonin mm -hmm. teaches that if we practice the Lotus Sutra with this conviction, that peaceful practices are obstacles and difficulties and not fun, mm -hmm. and we're going to kick their freaking asses because that's what we do. All right. With this conviction, we will definitely overcome any hardship and attain the life state of absolute happiness that is Buddhahood. Because only a Buddha can do that, can think that. To think what I just said is to be the Buddha. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. Why then should those whose lives are endowed with vast good fortune? I love this. Good question, Mr. Ikeda. Why then should those whose lives are endowed with vast good fortune that have served a hundred, a ten thousand, a million, okay, ten billion Buddhas, and benefit gained from having made offerings to countless Buddhas, be born into an evil age and experience sufferings and hardship? Why? Nietzsche explains that this is because of their slander of the Lotus Sutra in past <clears throat> existences. 
Luckily, we just got done reading the opening of the eyes, right? What's he said? No, you can do all this and you won't run into any of this shit so long as you have done nothing to slander the lotus center. Which, good luck. Okay? So he's saying that the reason that we experience difficulties in the opening of the eyes, he's already clarified this, right, is because of our karma. All right? And our karma is elective in that we're bodhisattvas of the earth, right? So we ask for to create, deliberately create the appropriate karma, correct? Mm -hmm. Understand mm -hmm. this. We don't create any karma that we don't decide to create. Mm -hmm. We're Buddhists, yes. right. Mm -hmm. right? right? Okay, so we should not lament it if we have faith in the teaching that that's really what's going on here, right? Right. Okay, so he says, why then should those whose lives are endowed with vast good fortune and benefit from gain from having made offerings to countless Buddhas be born into an evil age and experience sufferings and hardships? Nietzsche explains that this is because of their slander of the Lotus Sutra and past existences. However, their immense good fortune and benefit of making offerings to untold Buddhas makes it possible for them through their reverse relationship with the Lotus Sutra to be born in this world as people who believe in the Lotus Sutra and have the potential to attain enlightenment through this sutra in their lifetime. This is illustrated by the following <coughs> passage in Myolo's annotation on the words and phrases of the Lotus Sutra. It is like the case of a person who falls to the ground but who then pushes himself up from the ground and rises to his feet again. This passage offers, offers a metaphor for people who, though falling into evil paths as a result of slander, form a connection with the correct teaching that will ultimately enable them to find their way to enlightenment through that teaching. Those who fall to the ground get back on their feet by using the ground to push themselves up. In the same way, those who slander the Lotus Sutra will gain enlightenment through the Lotus Sutra. Mm -hmm. The mystic law embraces even those who form a reverse relationship with it, enabling all people to attain Buddhahood. Such is the unfathomable, unfathomable power of the poison drum relationship in Buddhism. Seeing illness is an opportunity to deepen one's faith. This is what I was talking about, Vimalakirti Sutra, right? Those who uphold the mystic law have the power to withstand any adversity. Nam Myoho Rengekyo has the beneficial power to lessen karmic retribution and change poison into medicine. Here, let us look at some of the encouragement and guidance that Nichiren Daishun has sent to other followers who are struggling with illness. In On Curing Karmic Disease, which is addressed to the lay priest Ota, he writes that even illnesses that result from karma and are the most difficult to cure can be healed by the good medicine of the Lotus Sutra. Myoho Rengekyo. And he cites a passage from the great teacher Tentai's great concentration and insight that explains, even if one has committed grave offenses, the retribution can be lessened in this life. Thus, illness occurs when evil karma is about to be dissipated. This expresses the principle of lessening one's lessening karma retribution. Nichiren explains that Ota is the most surely, pardon me, Nietzsche explains that Ota is most surely experiencing his present illness so that he can avoid worse suffering that would appear as retribution for his past slander of the law. Remember, in the opening of the eyes, that's what we were told, Nietzsche explains, is why we experience those difficulties in this lifetime. We're getting rid of them all in this lifetime. Understand? Right? So he's, he's consistent with this. He also reassures him that he will definitely be healed, definitely be healed, and that his lifespan extended because he knows Ota's faith. He can make that statement. The reason I put the caveat in is not everybody has the kind of faith that's necessary to get that result, but everybody that attempts to achieve that faith makes progress. He's going to talk about just move yourself an inch forward. He even goes so far as to say that should there fail to be signs of recovery, Ota should cry out, the Buddha, the eye of the entire world, is a great liar. And the Lotus Sutra, the wonderful sutra of the single vehicle, is a scripture of clever flourishes. The world-honored one should give me proof if he cares about his good name. Okay, so Nietzsche is saying, yeah, you can, 
You can express yourself in a powerful way as the Buddha that you are. You are not a beggar. Please help me if you have time. Please help me if you have the power to. Okay? Please help me if you can hear me. Please help me if you're real. That's not going to get you anywhere. That's not being the Buddha. The Buddha doesn't talk that way. No. To even his master. Do you understand? All right, because they're both Buddhists. That's what the Master's mercy accomplished with the disciple. They are both Buddhists. They're equal. Everywhere, they're equal. Elsewhere, he assures the lay nun Toki Jonin's wife, who is suffering from a protracted illness. God, that poor family got a lot of illness. <laughs> that because Buddhism has the power to change even fixed karma, it was definitely possible for her to extend her life. He tells her, since repentance will eradicate even fixed karma to say nothing of karma that is unfixed. Your illness from pr on prolonging life. Your illness is surely not due to karma, but even if it were, you could rely on the power of the Lotus Sutra to cure it from the bow and arrow. Now, what the hell did he just say there? Did you guys, think, did you guys catch that? Do you get it, what he just said? Mm -hmm. He says, your illness is surely not due to karma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. How could that be? Mm -hmm. well, everything's, everything's due to karma, right? right. Not illness? No, he's saying, your, your illness. illness is surely due to karma. I got that boom, boom, boom. I like, as soon as I saw it, wow. <laughs> 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 Why? Who's he talking to? He's talking to the lay Toki Jonin's wife, right? Yes. He's talking to the lay nun. Okay, that means a devout believer if she's a lay nun. And she's Toki Jonin's wife. And so he's saying, you're already of the same mind as me. You're encountering the three obstacles and the four devils. This isn't karma. Oh. That's what he said in that mm -hmm. statement. Okay, as I've said to all of you before, even though Soka Gakkai uses Sancho Shima as some sort of a catch-all for stubbing your toe or anything that you don't like, that is not what Sancho Shima is. Okay, Sancho Shima only occurs when you are nearing the path of Anottara Samyak Sambodai. Now he's going to say all that right now, so you don't have to believe me. But that's why I got the dictionary out mm. and read you the dictionary definition because you have to understand this point. That is not karma. That's not karmic retribution. That's karma of being the Buddha. But that's not karmic retribution from a causal standpoint. That's why you can say, your illness is surely not due to karma. Mm. But even if it were, even if that's weren't, the three mm -hmm. obstacles in the four devils, mm -hmm. which I know it is, mm -hmm. you could rely on the power of the Lotus Sutra to cure it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Being gravely ill doesn't necessarily mean that one will die. We all know this. We've seen many examples of this. Nichiren writes to the lay nun Myoshin, the wife of the ailing lay priest Takahashi, a person's death, and I even said this to you the other day when you were talking about drink lots of water, a person's death is not determined by illness. It's determined by karma. Now that karma could be that you didn't drink any water. Okay? But it's not the lack of water. It's the karma that you didn't drink water. That's what goes from lifetime to lifetime to lifetime. Not the H2O. Or the physical form that didn't get enough. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Is everybody with me? Yes. Okay, so, a person's death is not determined by illness, the good medicine for all ills. He continues, could not this illness of your husband's be the Buddha's design, his good fortune? Because, of, because the Villa Makirti and Nirvana Sutras both teach that sick people will surely attain Buddhahood. Illness gives rise to the resolve to attain the way. When you think you're going to die, you try and get your shit together as fast as you can. You try and get everything in line. It motivates you. I don't have time to waste anymore. Uh -huh. If as a result of falling ill, one... If as a result of falling ill. If as a result of one falling ill. One deepens one deter, one's determination and faith. 
Because sometimes falling ill will give some people rise to have doubt. That's just the opposite of what I'm talking about here. Right. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. One deepens one deter one's determination and faith, then the path to Buddhahood will definitely open. And you can see those miraculous cures. Okay? Illness then becomes the Buddha's design to express the Buddha's, the power of the Buddha. Okay? The life of the Buddha. No doubt Nichiren also wished to convey this powerful conviction to Tokimitsu. In the proof of the Lotus Sutra, he writes in a similar vein, in the end, through the help of the Lotus Sutra, they will attain Buddhahood. Nichiren is urging Tokimitsu to have absolute confidence that he will gain the life state of Buddhahood. Okay, because he's still living in the nine worlds. He hasn't quite gotten clued into actual each and sons and all that sort of thing. It's not there yet. Uh, uh, Nietzsche Shonen hasn't, hasn't qualified the oneness of the person and the law yet. Buddhism the sewing isn't even the same Buddhism the sewing we practice now yet. Do you understand? Do you? Mm -hmm. Do you? Okay. So, Nichiren is urging Tokimitsu to have absolute confidence that he will gain the life state of Buddhahood. Being determined to battle the three obstacles and the four devils. This is what we all have to be. From the Gosho. Now since you, Ueno, Shichiro, Jiro, are an ordinary person in the latter age and were born to a warrior family, you should be by rights be called an evil man. Why? Because actually the karma was uh, based on dependent origination, so who your family was a reflection of you. It was a reflection of your karma. That's why... If you were born into people that killed things, you know, there was still a little bit of a caste kind of a mentality, right? You were born in the warrior class, you were born in the noble, or you were born in the merchant class or whatever, okay? Mm -hmm. So he's saying, since you were born in a warrior family, what do warriors do? They fight, they kill, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So by rights, you should be called an evil man, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And yet, your heart is that of a good man. So what does he say there right away? It's not how society views you. It's predicated on your faith. Faith, mm -hmm. faith is what determines whether or not you're, 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 you're uh, praiseworthy or not. Okay? Mm. Not, not your position in society. Mm -hmm. I say this for a reason. Everyone from the ruler on down to the common people refuses to take faith in my teachings. They inflict harm on the few who do embrace them, taxing heavily, heavily taxing or confiscating their estates and fields, and even in some cases putting them to death. So, putting them to death. So it is a difficult thing to believe in my teachings, the mentor states as a fact. And yet both your mother and deceased father dared to accept them. Now you have succeeded, your father is his heir, and without any prompting from others, you too have wholeheartedly embraced these teachings. Many people, both high and low, have admonished or threatened you, but you have refused to give up your faith. Since you now appear certain to attain Buddhahood, why? Because based on his actions, it's pretty clear he's not going to he's not going to renounce his faith mm -hmm. to the last moment of his life. His dad didn't. His mom didn't. He sure isn't. He's, he's now, now, I, since you now appear certain. In other words, I can't be sure that to be there with you every step of the way to death, but since it now seems as though you've gotten this to the point where you're never going to backslide, you will attain Buddhahood. Okay? And perhaps the heavenly devil and evil spirits are using illness to try to intimidate you. You get it? Life in this world is limited. Never be even the least bit afraid. Okay? That's the way a Buddha thinks. Here Nietzsche broadens the scope of his discussion from illness to life's various hardships and sufferings in general. He emphasizes that it is by fearlessly confronting and overcoming such challenges that we can establish a life of unshakable victory. What is a life of unshakable victory? Buddha. Okay, so what did he just say? He says, he emphasizes that it is by fearlessly confronting and overcoming such challenges, life-threatening challenges of illness, any kind of thing that, that appears as a three-obstacle, four-devil issue. 
okay? That by overcoming and by overcoming and confronting those challenges, we establish the life of Buddhahood in our present form. Mm -hmm. He explains that the difficulties are trials that arise when we are earnestly persevering in our Buddhist practice are the workings of three obstacles and four devils. They're not the workings of our karmic retribution. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Do you understand? These are this is straight fundamental darkness coming out to stop you from becoming the Buddha. Mm. That's far from that's far different than the kind of karma of I did this and it's in my karma now, so I'm going to get an effect for it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, first, Nietzsche affirms how difficult it is to remain steadfast in faith um, in the, in the evil age of the latter day. Okay, so he gives that up. He says this is going to be extremely hard. <coughs> he specifically refers to the struggles faced by Tokimitsu's family. Not just you, Nanjo. Your mom and dad had to go through all this shit too, just like me. Deeply commending the young man's parents on their strong faith. He also praises Tokimitsu as his father's heir for his staunch commitment to faith and great, amid great adversity. His circumstances had been far from easy or tranquil. In Suruga province, where the Atsuhara persecution took place, everybody knows that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Tokumitsu had striven tirelessly to protect his fellow practitioners and applied himself with unflagging devotion to his Buddhist practice. It must have seemed as though the negative forces were intensifying to make to Tokumitsu, the key figure among Nichiren's followers in the area, abandon his faith, right? Because what's the devil of six heaven do if he can't get to you? Takes over and influences others, okay, to try and screw with you. Mm -hmm. All right, so if your faith is such that, oh, I see you, that will buy, then you just reappear as your wife. No. <laughs> Nietzsche, <laughs> that was a joke. Nietzsche writes, many people, both high and low, have admonished or threatened you. What makes Toki, Tokimitsu so admirable is that despite all the obstacles he faced, he continued to exert himself bravely and vigorously for the sake of the law, refusing to discard his faith, not complaining I'm not getting benefits, not complaining I'm not getting protection. Praising his sincere faith, Nichiren declares that Tokimitsu must be close to attaining Buddha because that's the kind of faith that you express, express with your life when you're close to attaining Buddhahood. Mm -hmm. He explains that this is undoubtedly the reason why illness is now assailing his young disciple, because it's three obstacles and four devils time. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. In other words, devilish functions, not karmic retribution, devilish functions of gampan no mumyo, which is in everything, just, not, just like everything has gampan no homyo. You get it? Good and evil. Mm -hmm are the same. Mm -hmm. the fundamental nature of enlightenment and fundamental darkness are the same. Original, two sides of the original state. All right? Um, where am I? I just now okay. dropped my spot. Which page am I on? 60? Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. What makes Tokimitsu so admirable is despite all the obstacles of he, faced, he, he faced, he continued to exert himself bravely and vigorously for the sake of the law, refusing to discard his faith. Praising his sincere faith, Nietzsche declares that Tokimitsu must be close to attaining Buddhahood. He explains that this is undoubtedly the reason why illness is now assailing his young disciple. In other words, devilish functions are seeking to intimidate Tokimitsu in the form of illness and prevent him from moving forward. <coughs> it is a trial in which Tokimitsu's faith will be put to the test to keep him from moving forward, to get to Anuttara Samyak Sambodai, stage six. Get it? Allow me to clarify here that fa falling ill is not a sign of weak faith or defeat. No one can escape the four universal sufferings of birth, aging, sickness, and death. When we fall ill, we can summon up powerful faith to battle the devil of illness. Illness itself can become an opportunity for us to achieve a life imbued with eternity, happiness, true self, and purity, which is what? Buddhahood. Those are the four noble virtues of the Buddha. It, so he's saying, for us to achieve a life imbued, for us to achieve Buddhahood in our present form, is what he just said there, right? Mm -hmm. 
It can serve as a chance for us to strengthen our faith even more so that we can triumph over devilish functions. Karmic retribution, he's not talking about. He's talking about devilish functions. And when we have the strong, invincible faith to withstand any onslaught of the three obstacles and four devils, devilish functions, nothing can stop us from attaining the life state of Buddhahood. The three obstacles and four devils descend in force when an ordinary person is close to attaining Buddhahood. Nietzschean notes that when these obstructing forces appear, the wise will rejoice while the foolish will, rejoice, will retreat. Because the wise will know that they're approaching Buddhahood and the foolish will think, shit, it's not working. Okay? We are wise in, are we wise in faith, pushing on with a dauntless fighting spirit? Or are we foolish in faith, our minds filled with alarm and doubt? In the case of sickness, having the spirit to fight through to the end against the devil of illness is vital. In a battle of whether we win over uh, with the, devilish, the devil of illness or allow ourselves to be defeated by it. When we encounter painful sufferings, such as illness, we stand at a crossroads of great spiritual growth and inner development. When we encounter painful sufferings, such as illness. But painful sufferings are where we stand at crossroads of great spiritual growth and inner development by overcoming any such thing that can be called a painful suffering. By utilizing faith for the purpose of defeating it, we at actually grow spiritually and develop ourselves as the Buddha. Finding, founding Soka Gakkai President Tenesaburo Makaguchi said, to live one's life based on the mystic law is to change poison into medicine. As long as we live in society, there will be times when we encounter accidents or natural disasters or experience setbacks such as business failures. Such painful and unfortunate events could be described as poison or karmic retribution. But no matter what situation we face, if we base our lives on faith, on the mystic law, and exert ourselves in our Buddhist practice without doubting the power of the Gohonzon, we can definitely turn poison into medicine, transforming a negative situation into something positive. For example, if you fall ill and just spend your time worrying about what your Ill that your illness is karmic retribution, it won't solve anything. The important thing is to persevere in faith with strong conviction and determination to uh, positively transform your illness and achieve the great good fortune and benefit of regaining your faith. When you do so, not only will you, become, will you overcome your illness, but when you make a complete recovery, you will be even healthier than before. This is the power of the mystic law, which can change poison into medicine. What is crucial is the absolute confidence that you can change poison into medicine no matter what daunting obstacles you may face. What face? What did that just say? What is, cru what is crucial is moogie washing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what is crucial is doubt-free faith. Mm -hmm. What is crucial is the absolute confidence that you can change poison into medicine. Yeah. That's doubt-free faith. No matter what daunting obstacles you may face. That's doubt-free faith. Mm -hmm. This unshakable belief is the key to overcoming illness and other difficulties in life. That's doubt-free faith and opening wide the path for attaining Buddhahood without fail, only through doubt-free faith. In the record of the orally transmitted teachings, Nichiren clarifies this saying, the single word belief is the sharp sword with which one confronts and overcomes fundamental darkness or ignorance. In the proof of the Lotus Sutra, Nichiren's stance on illness is very clear. He says, life in this world is limited, Never be even the least bit afraid. This is the, his essential, essential guidance to Tokimitsu. Just about time. Okay, so we start on page 62, making our uh, limited life in this world one of victory, which we'll, yeah, we'll definitely be able to finish next week. So, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.